bring the demonstration, please. see any of the silhouette here just a little bit now we can turn the chin under and we can angle the jaw toward the chin in this manner shape of the front of the hair and the ear set at this angle with the back of the head and the top of the head expressed with the side of the pencil. So that's all you want, not much, but just enough to see <coughs> specifically what the head's doing. And then you need to show how it attaches to the rib cage. So you find the pit of the neck, and there's a cast shadow over the neck. And then here we find the outside of the shoulder and we see the other side of the neck so this is the silhouette the line of the shoulders is parallel to the ground and then the angle from the arm or the shoulder to the wrist is slight curve and then here we find the angle from the shoulder to the elbow is an arc now we can wrap this shadow over the rib cage and pick up the turning under <coughs> deltoid muscle and swing under the collarbone Add some volume to the trapezius muscle. Find now beneath the collarbone how the top of the arm turns with the deltoid muscle on top. And at that point, you can see that we get the pectoral muscle as we do over here as well. And then from that point, we get one line to the chair here we get another line out to the hip. <coughs> so we're thinking quite abstractly and trying not to lose any of the gesture in the, in the process. Okay, the breasts lie on the torso and there should be a sense of that, how they conform to the rib cage. Okay, we're going to need about two to three minutes on it. And when people talk about weight in the drawing, there's not just the weight of the figure on the stand, but how the parts of the figure, too, um, overlap one another.
so I'll wrap that shadow over the rib cage. I'll swing across the figure to find the relationship of the other side of the rib cage here to the abdominal muscles. We can turn the figure under to the crotch. We can find here the external oblique muscle and on the other side, which is the flexed side of the figure, <coughs> the muscle creates more of a shape. And on this side, we can complete that shape and draw out to the chair. And here, we can also just pick up enough of the half tone to show the muscle form and then we can draw from it to the bottom of the figure. The leg now overlaps the crotch and is angled like that, one long line. And this leg is overlapped. Here's the knee contained within the silhouette of the leg in this pose. And then we find the top plane of the leg and from beneath it we find the tibia. And here's the angle of the inside of the knee draw all the way out to the ankle and then turn the foot the other leg can be completed by picking up the top plane of the thigh turning it over, finding how this leg overlaps her right leg because we now will draw the bottom of the thigh. And then this leg overlapped really just see the front of the knee. <clears throat> and then this arm is one of the easier portions of the figure to draw because all you need to do is to turn the upper arm into shadow, find where the wrist or rather the base of the hand falls and then draw from this through the elbow and then down to that point. And this arm, we just see a little bit of the upper arm. We locate the wrist and knowing where we're going, we're able to draw with one stroke to it. Any other shadows are just handled as simply as that. Or in the case of this shadow here. You can see that the shadow not only describes the shape of her head as it falls over the rib cage, but it describes the, the shape of the upper rib cage as well. Any questions so far? Oh yes, and then this inside of the wrist. Again, before you draw the other half of the arm, make sure you indicate how wide the wrist is that you're drawing to. And then you just pick up the outside of her hand. Okay, let's try a different pose.
Okay, here's a pose with some really good and interesting <coughs> negative shapes. That would be the space between the legs, the space, the triangle between our torso, arm, and thigh, such shapes as those. And to some degree, if you're careful, you can allow those shapes to help you construct the pose as well. Okay, look at the hair, and you can see where the light is reflected back at us is where the planes, the top, side, and back planes of the head come together and join. Then you find how the neck joins the head. Now you can find the angle to the shoulder and from the shoulder to the elbow and here in front of the neck to the shoulder and out in one line to the hand. Okay, the back of the figure, first of all, let's find where the torso overlaps her arm, <coughs> and here we can now pick up the long line of the back itself. On the other side of the figure, if we swing across, first we find the center line of the back. And then within it, we can see the top of the shoulder girdle, <coughs> and if, if you want to show that the shoulder overlaps the back, which overlaps the other shoulder, then the edges have to be harder on this side of the form to get that sense of overlap. So you can even touch the edge a little bit and enhance that if you don't draw too dark. All right. Now, as for this, this hand, I'll draw its shape, or its abstracted shape, and then we'll later draw from the shoulder to the arm. As for this arm, I drew line one, which is the gesture line. Line two is the character line. It tells us if she's fat or thin or ideally proportioned. And then, I can also, having drawn line one for the torso, I can draw line two, which is the character line of the entire torso. Yeah, we'll build a rib cage and pelvis on it later, but now I want just the geometry of our pose. Okay, now to complete the uh, torso, you want to go into it and see that the back, there's twist at the waist. We're seeing the back as a three-quarter view and the pelvis as a profile. Therefore, we know that there has to be some twist at the waist to achieve that. You want to find the latissimus dorsi muscle, which overlaps the front of the figure and runs diagonally toward the ilium. 
And then you can find here line two of her arm, which is the character line. We'll build all the musculature on top of that later. Okay, swing back to your figure, and then here beneath the pectoral muscle, you'll find the shape of the breast. Cast shadow. And then you want to find the front, if you swim under the rib cage, find the front of the rib cage. And then you pick up another shadow from the latissimus over the rib cage. And you can turn the torso back here toward the crest of the ilium. And then draw through from that point to the position at which the thigh overlaps the front of her torso. And that in turn angles off very simply as an S curve. This leg is a matter of just drawing from the waist to the wrist. And then this we swing under the pelvis, we'll find the angle at the back of the gluteus muscle. Now we want to get this to get under the torso here. And then we find here the turning back of the leg behind the knee joint. let that figure fall off and devalue a little bit as it goes away from the light source. And then the hand is everted, which means it's thrown outwards from its center axis. So the little finger also separated from the other three. And the thumb, as is often the case, is held out away from the hand at about 30 degrees. This leg now, from the knee, is a matter of drawing the angle to the foot. And the other leg is overlapped slightly by the chair from the knee down. And then you find the angle behind the knee of the calf, and then here you can turn it all the way to her foot, and then we can build anatomy on top of that as simply as we did on the arm or the torso. trying to take care to make all the shapes within the figure rhythmically relate to one another. Okay, let's do one more pose. Okay, in a case like this, you can really see how the shadow, if you draw it, is going to wrap over the breast and over the rib cage, over the abdomen, and 
up over the uh, thigh. Okay, so change the head angle. It's always important to get just the right angle on it. And it doesn't take long. So just make sure that you get it right. Okay, the hair overlaps the head in a down shot like this where she's leaning forward with the head. It's really a matter of getting overlaps, the brow to overlap the face, the facial mask to overlap the jaw, the hair naturally to overlap the cranium. <coughs> Again, note that the crest light on her hair denotes where the front plane of the head takes off from the top plane of the head. Okay. The shoulder is overlapped by the head. The pit of the neck is here. Now we want to find the angle out to the chair. <coughs> we'll pick up a plane where the trapezius overlaps the body, and we'll find cast shadow here. We'll also note that the shoulder joins the pectoral muscle about there, and then we get this angle for the front of her figure. If we have here the trapezius muscle, and then here the front plane of the shoulder joint, and then here the back plane of the arm, now we can draw this simply as line one of the gesture. Don't worry about the, uh, the bend in the elbow. It really isn't, uh, from our angle or my angle, it's a curve. And the shadow wraps over the collarbone. And then here we pick up Terry's muscle, and in front of it, I swing across, I find where the breast 
overlaps the sternum. And then here we find the pectoral muscle and the angle of the breast. And we can wrap this shadow over the rib cage and find that all this can be expressed as one shadow value. Here, turn the breast under and find the rib cage beyond it. The arm now can be completed here. to it. You always want to find the location and the width of the next joint in sequence because without that you're not going to find it as you try to draw from say the elbow to the wrist. Okay, now you can swing under the rib cage to find here what's happening where the upper and lower abdomen come together. And then beneath this point, you'll continue out to the stand, and you can find here the turning under at the external oblique muscle. And then beneath that, you'll find the turning back of the lower abdomen. From that point here, you'll pick up the angle up to the foot of the entire leg. The crotch, swing across the figure now to find the angle of the pelvis and the gluteus medius muscle here, the hand <coughs> wraps over the knee joint, and look back to the head so that you can always determine the proper size of the hand. Then we've got the knee angling back behind her other leg. And we have the width of the knee joint, the angle to the calf muscle. Turn the calf muscle under. Turn the crest of the tibia under. You should get in the habit of knowing what you're drawing. You should be able to identify every turn that that shadow takes and why it does. All right, here we see just the top of her leg and then we pick up a shadow cast like this over almost all of the thigh. And then the other leg The knee is here, so we can connect the dots, so to speak. The width of the knee, here. Turn the knee under, draw it to the ankle, swing beneath the knee to find the width of the entire leg at that point. 
and now the figure sitting on the chair and the tendon and a slightly foreshortened leg. And then the extended lower leg here. And we want to turn the knee joint under. And we want to find the ankle. foot is extended too, so that it looks like this. With the ankle or the bottom of the fibula overlapping the foot. can look like at the proper angle Randall. That'll be good. I'll get up in a sec. Um, if you want to switch back to this one, what I did was, and you can rest Marianne, thanks. I found that there was a nice shadow next to the figure, so I just swept her figure into it. Thank you. 